Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. It's fair to say that I've had a bit of an on-off relationship with the Orient Bambino over the last three years. Indeed, the second video that I ever published to YouTube was about the Mark II black with rose gold Bambino that was very much the apple of my eye at the time. I thought it was gorgeous, especially when the lights were down a little lower than usual. It looked far more expensive than the relatively modest entry price would have suggested. Not perfect though, I mean 21 mil lug width, thanks for nothing Orient. Can I just put it out there, how many 21 mil lug width straps have all of you got lying around in your watch boxes at the moment? I'll tell you how many I've got, zero. I do not own one watch strap for 21 mil lugs. My advice at the time therefore was to pick the Bambino that you like the look of in terms of the dial and the strap combo because chances are you weren't going to be spending a lot more money on a cheap watch changing out that strap with the awkward strap width. Unfortunately I scratched that lovely piece of domed mineral crystal of my original Mark II Bambino. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why I'm a sapphire only guy these days. I sold it off on eBay as a scratched watch, lost a lot of money and moved forward. I decided to try again with one of the Mark IVs towards the end of last year. It was a colourway that I had been after, a grey dial with that suede strap and it looked fantastic. But the old girl had put on some beef since my last affair. She'd gone up to 42 mil in diameter with a 22 mil lug width. I felt that was just too big for a dress watch. Apparently Orient have been listening to some if not all of the community complaints about the Bambino and they've released a number of new models since that Mark IV and I'm going to show you the small second variant today. They also released a 37mm but they've labelled it as a ladies watch which I'm sure has killed it for many guys who would have considered it. Big shout out to my mate Ashley, a firm friend and supporter of the channel. He's loaned me a number of pieces in the past and indeed he's loaned me this Bambino today it's for sale so if you're in Australia and you fancy this mint condition small second bambino with a champagne dial leave me a comment leave me an offer of an Aussie dollar price including postage and I'll make sure that it gets to you all right a better bambino then let's flip the camera and find out my goodness I did some waffling in that intro sorry about that you get the idea though bought to sold to so that's the question today then, is this Orient Bambino Small Seconds a better Bambino? Well, without ruining the rest of the 10 minute video, yes it is. I think this is definitely better than either of the two models that I've reviewed previously. Very, very attractive and let's be honest, not that expensive. These are between $150 and $160 on Amazon.com, depending on which of the five model variants you go for. I'll obviously leave a link to that one in the description of the video. Is it the best that this watch could be though? I'm not convinced. I think there's a couple of things that they have decided not to rectify when they've moved on to this newer small second model that I think they would be well to fix up in the future. There will be moans and there will be niggles later on. Now when I say new, I mean relatively new, new to me anyway. These have been out for almost two years, but sometimes I just take my sweet time getting around to reviewing these watches and that's certainly the case here. So all the usual review good stuff. We'll get some nice close-ups of the watch. I'm going to pop this this one on the time grapher, first time I've had a Bambino on a time grapher. We'll get it on wrist inside and out and I'll tell you the pros and the cons of the small second Bambino. So it's actually the same case shape and dimensions as the previous generation 1, 2 and 3. That means 40.5 mil in diameter, just under 12.5 mil thick, very compact 46 mil lug tip to lug tip. When you look at the watch top down, you can see very, very short lugs, not a lot of gap there between the, the lug ends and the leather strap. It also means, unfortunately, that this watch retains that very awkward and thankless 21 millimeter lug width. Now on the supplied leather strap, this one weighs in at 56 grams, so very, very light and comfortable. I've been wearing this one for the last couple of days and I must say it has been very, very nice. You barely know that it's on your wrist at all. 316L stainless steel case, it's a three piece case, so a smooth bezel, kind of mixture of brushed and polished on the mid case. We've got a little 316L stainless steel sign crown there. 
Press on case back, only water resistance. So really you're not gonna be getting this one wet to any great degree. Display case back, so there's a few upgrades here. They haven't changed the overall shape fundamentally, but they have made a few noticeable upgrades, including to that movement. I'll talk about it a little later. Now it does say genuine leather here. The strap is reasonable, if not outstanding. It's that kind of genuine leather, but full croc. Buckles a carryover, high polished, Orient logo just printed on there and a little tang. Case finishing, case construction, all very pleasant for a watch costing 150 US dollars. We've got a high polished bezel, nice horizontal brushing all the way along the mid case, high polish on the lugs and a sign crown with a little Orient logo printed on there again. You don't get sign crowns on Seiko's for 150, so it's nice to see it on their sister brand. You've already noticed, I'm sure, serious distortion coming off that. They call it a hardened mineral crystal, so you're not getting sapphire. I think the cheapest I've seen a piece of domed sapphire is about 250 US dollars, so the budget doesn't stretch to that one today. Like I said, though, they do call it hardened, but I managed to scratch mine, so take from that what you will. Plenty of distortion, though, especially when you get this one outside into some natural light, as I'll show you later but a very, very pretty dial. I think nothing says vintage quite like a small second sub dial there at the six o'clock. Reminds me very much of some Omega watches from the 1940s, 1950s. I'm guessing that's exactly what they were going for with the Arabics at the 12, three, six, and nine. Arrowhead indices everywhere else, those Dauphine hands and that small second sub dial ticking away there above the applied Arabic at six. So applied Arabics at the 12, three, six, and nine. Applied kind of arrowhead indices everywhere else and those Dauphine hands as noted. However, they're tapered. So faceted in the middle, but also tapered. Again, a nice little touch, a nice little design tweak they've made when this watch moved between the generations. We do have a printed minute track all the way around the outside edge and a date window chopped in there on the dial, just in board of the three, little beveled edge, a little kind of scallop there on that date window as well. Now this is the champagne dial version. I think this is the biggest of the sellers and you can see why. Silver case, silver hands and indices, but that nice champagne, perhaps not as champagne-y, if that is even a word, as featured in the Orient adverts for this watch, but noticeably off-white anyway. Not much sunburst here. There is some sunburst effect in some of the other colorways, but you can barely notice it, if at all, on this champagne dial version. So the movement in this one is an F6222. This is the small second variant of the movement that features in all of these newer model Bambinos. And it's a big improvement on the old ones. The old ones were pretty rough. 24 joules hacking and hand winding. Now, Orient have a stated accuracy on this one of minus 15 to plus 25. So as I said, I'll be interested to get it on the time grapher in just a second and see how this one performs. Not the most attractive movement in the world, to be honest, but for most people, this is not gonna be perhaps necessarily their first automatic watch, but maybe their second or their third. So no harm in putting a display case back on these ones. I don't think it's made this watch particularly noisy. Certainly noise was a complaint that I had about the old Bambino, but this one seems to be reasonably silent. Let's see if it's accurate. That's all right, eh? Plus five seconds, plus seven seconds per day, very healthy amplitude zero beat error. That's kind of what you want from an everyday wear. It's okay, it's a little fast and a little slow because you'll end up a minute fast and being early for your meetings rather than a minute slow and being late for your meetings. And I think it looks gorgeous once you get it on wrist. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. I know that 40.5 mil, a lot of people consider it to be too big for a dress watch because essentially this is a everyday slash dress watch. I see what they mean. You know, traditionally dress watches tend to be smaller. They're not big chunky divers. So they've been like 36, even 34 mil in diameter. I thought the 42 was too big for its purpose. 40.5, my seven inch wrist, I think it could certainly go a couple of mil smaller than that, but I'm not gonna complain about it too much. I don't think it's too big. I think this is still gonna be perfectly wearable for the majority of people. Orient know what they're doing in that sense. 46 mil lug tip to lug tip helps a lot. And the proper overhead shot, still quite legible even under my studio lights. High polished hands and indexes, but they don't tend to attract too much light glare. They don't glint and glisten. You still get a good, fairly clean read from the dial. It's that piece of dome mineral crystal that does the light play. And there it is outside. You can see what I mean. You do really get some lovely distortions 
from the edges of the viewing angle and even when you're looking at the watch from top down it's still quite noticeable that that piece of crystal is fairly heavily domed. Anti-reflective coating, not at this price, I'm sorry. Please look elsewhere if you want AR coating. But it's a dress watch. It's not really meant to be worn outside during the day in full sun. It's meant to be worn in the office or of an evening when you're at your piano recital, a little bit of Chopin or perhaps the ballet, whatever it is you get up to of an evening. So is the Orient Bambino small second going to be the watch to accompany me to the ballet the next time I am heading in that direction? Well, no, I don't think so. There are still two things stopping me from falling in love with the Bambino all over again. Those being the 21mm lug width and the date complication. 21mm lug width is easy to argue against and very difficult to argue for. This strap is all right, but it's probably the weak link in the package. It's probably the first thing that you want to get rid of, upgrade at some point in the future. If it was 20, you would probably be able to do that from the straps you've got lying around the house. But as it's 21, it's going to cost you and you're going to be dealing with a much narrower selection of straps as a consequence, which is a shame. So come on, Orient, standardize that the next time you make a fresh batch of these. The second one, the date complication, that kind of can be argued either way, can't it? What did they do? Did they delete this and alienate the people that will be wearing this one as a 9 to 5 office watch? Or did they include the date and alienate the people who are going to be wearing it as an occasional dress watch? For me, if I was buying one of these, it would be as an occasional wear dress watch. So deleting the date would have made a lot of sense for me. It would have made the dial much more symmetrical, made it look much more vintage, and I think cleaned the design up. As I said, taking it from a seven to a, an eight in terms of the design and aesthetics anyway. I understand though a lot of people will be buying this as an office watch and for them a date is a necessary evil. At least it's not the black dial version because that one's got a white date wheel. They didn't even bother colour matching it and it looks even more out of place. So a better Bambino? Certainly. The best the Bambino could be I don't think so. So there you have it, a better Bambino, definitely. But is the Orient Bambino living its best life? I still don't think so. 20 mil lug width would have made so much more sense with this one, as would deleting that date complication. It would have turned a beautiful watch into an absolute stunner. A better Bambino, certainly, but not the best. Here's hoping the best is yet to come. Thanks for watching. See you soon.